hey guys welcome back to my channel so today we are going to be picking my march tbr now i've got you in front of my yeah i have completely no idea what the last thing i said was um anyway tbr time for march i'm currently sat in front of my kind of tbr cart plus uh, you're literally you are literally on top of a stack of books where um i've not read them apart from the top one oh and technically the second one but that was a read from ages ago um anyway so my tbr jar changing it up again this month previously it just had names of books in i've now added in prompts have no clue how many prompts i wrote down but there was a fair few um so it there will be like a nice mixture of some of it will be books that have just like been written down and also there's probably a book the odd book where it's not actually in here because it's so recent so in some ways that's where the um prompts will help um how many books are we going to pick out Let's pick out six. That feels quite good because then any other video I do, because I've got one currently planned for March. Technically the books are currently already out in my like little basket. Um, so technically I won't be picking those, even if a prompt matches it. I don't know. Honestly, there's no room for my hands at this point. Um, so yeah. Okay, clearly our first prompt was chosen, chosen for us because it literally, well, first book or prompt. We're just going to ignore that. That was the um, sequel of a book where I enjoyed it, but the third one doesn't come out in paperback for literally over a year. So we're picking again. Sorry, but needs must at this point as i pick out a hair wrong side of goodbye oh i have no clue where i've got this i need to go on a hunt for this one because i have no clue where it is is it the one that i've got up there already no mm. we'll have to go on a hunt for that one book of beginnings that one is right in front of me and luckily not on I was gonna say not on the stack you're on but it's next to it so you are kind of wobbling at this point the book of beginnings by Sally Page um this is it just I think this is a romance I don't know it might be more literary fiction it says Jo Sawsby is hiding from her past when she agrees to run her uncle's beloved stationery shop, glimpsing the lives of her customers between the wooden, between the warm wooden shelves as they scribble notes and browse colourful notebooks it distracts her from her bruised heart. When she meets Ruth, a vicar running from a secret, and Malcolm, a, a septuagenarian, still finding himself, she suddenly realises she's not alone. They each have a story that can transform Joe's life, if only she can let them in. Oh, it might be more of like a book of like friendships. Why did that book come out? Um, it might be more of like a book of friendships, as I've literally just said. Caitlin, stop sounding like a broken, freaking record. Um, but yeah, interesting. I've not actually had don't think I've had anything about this actually I think I picked it up from Tesco anyway so book one let's put it down on what is quite literally my draft excluder at this point and let's stick that prompt to the side next pick I kind of hope for a prompt I don't know why oh we had a couple there oh we have a we have a prompt and it is a black coloured book so basically a book where the cover is majority black um i've got a book a few books in here 
and I have a bronzer for some reason. None of those are fully black. I do have one idea um, currently, which is the Atlas 6 by Olive Blake, because obviously it's quite literally all black. Do I have anything else? Could go with Ninth House. Um, I've got another prompt that is a bit more specific to this so i think i don't i don't think that'll be my first option um yeah i don't know what um, six of crows although it's black i've got a few books that i literally prefer. um six of crows although it's black i don't like it's got black on the cover i don't think it's I don't think any of the books over in that little stack are suitable so yeah we'll go with the atlas six by olivia blake this is like a fantasy and it says six extraordinary magicians five chances to win one secret society once a decade the world's best magicians are invited to join the elite alexandrian society its members enjoy a lifetime of power and access to ancient secrets but only five places are offered, so after recruitment by the mysterious Atlas Blake Clee, the candidates must complete an, a rigorous year of arcane study. Libby Rhodes and Nico di Verona are inseparable enemies and cosmologists who can counter matter with their minds. Parisa Kamali is a telepath, Raina Mori understands the flow of life itself, and Callum Nova can manipulate desires. Finally, there's Tristan Kane, whose powers mystify even himself. The rivals must survive their trials, and if they can prove for themselves, they will. Most of them. It's kind of a... Uh, some ways... It reminds me of when I read Fourth Ring, how obviously there's limited numbers of, like, dragons and candidates. There's more candidates than there are dragons. Um, obviously, nowhere near fourth wing at all obviously um but yeah at this six next one you guys can read it first and i think that says order of the phoenix yes it does so we have got the next book in the harry potter this is a chunky book well to be fair all of them are from like book three um, so yeah, Order of the Phoenix, literally the fifth instalment in the Harry Potter. How many pages is this book? Almost 800 pages, um, which I don't like based off of a different book that I plan on reading in March. So yeah, literally fifth instalment, Voldemort is now back and sorry, spoiler alert for all of those who, um, have never read Harry Potter. Um, but yeah, Voldemort is now back, um, and this follows this Order of the Phoenix, which is kind of a secret society in a way, um, of like a group of good guys, um, who are trying to fight back against the bad. Easiest way I can explain it, and obviously we just follow Harry along in his fifth year at Hogwarts. So yeah, so that's book three. So currently we've got two fantasy and I'm going to call it a literary fiction at this point. Oh, I accidentally picked up two. You guys can view it first. Oh, and of course I held it upside down. And it says Wrath of Poseidon, which is a Clive Castler book. And it's also in this pile oh my god i'm about to have books fall on me at this point it's also one of the books that was in the stack next to the one that you guys are currently on so yeah wrath of poseidon by clive Kessler. did i yeah so originally i had read like 65 pages of this book oh it's a proper like floppy cover um i've read one at the at this point i think it's only one of clive's books and got like halfway through a second where i soft dnf it soft dnf'd it accidentally in a way of like 
I was enjoying it so much that I didn't want it to end, so I stopped it halfway through. You get what I mean. Anyway, it's uh, this is technically part of the series, but they're all standalones in themselves. If that makes sense. Um, and it says treasure hunters Remy and Sam Fargo are in Washington DC looking for the final clue in a puzzle more than a decade old. A dangerous mystery which originally led to their teaming up. For ten, year, for 10 years ago, a chance meeting that threw Remy and Sam together led to the pair diving for ancient sunken wrecks off the Greek coast. But when a secretive billionaire decides he didn't want anyone to, diving in the seas near his operations, the pair found themselves in deep trouble. Only now, returning 10 years later, do they finally understand who and what they were up against. And with the lost riches of an ancient king lying somewhere in these waters, their formidable energy, enemy won't be giving up easily. Suddenly finding the treasure becomes less important than making it home. Um, I think part of the reason why I didn't continue on with this book is because, so there's the Fargo kind of series. Um, and then there is the kind of Dirk Pitt series. The first books that I had read of Clive's were the Dirk Pitt's ones. Um, and I enjoyed the characters of that. Um, so I think it took, I just wasn't into it. And I feel like 60 pages in is still a good part to like DNF without fully judging the book. Um, so yeah, I kind of want a romance in these next two books. Technically I could have had that with the first book, but comment down below what you think that book was. I don't know what it says. I was just making sure it's Where the crawdads sing. Okay, it's, you're quite literally sat on top of it, so hold on. Let's put you back, even though you're technically now a bit lower. Where the crawdads sing by Delia Owens. Obviously, I think this made its rounds many years ago. Um, and it says, For years, rumours of the Marsh Girl have haunted Barclay Cove, a quiet town on the North Carolina coast. So in late 1969, when handsome Chase Andrews is found dead, the locals immediately suspect Kaya Clark, the so-called Marsh Girl. But, Clark, but Kaya is not what they say. Sensitive and intelligent, she has survived for years alone in the marsh that she calls home, finding friends in the gulls and lessons in the sand. Then the time comes when she yearns to be loved, when two young men from town become intrigued by her wild beauty. Kaya opens herself to a new life until the unthinkable happens. Um, don't know what genre that book is. Oh, and we have one that fell out. You guys see it first. The Inheritance Games, which is quite literally right next to me. I have wanted to read this for so while. Like, I literally glance over at this and I see the green and I'm like, mm, I so want to read that. Um, this is the first in a series um and it says a billion dollar a billion dollar fortune avery has a plan keep her head down work hard for a better future then an eccentric billionaire dies leaving her almost his entire fortune and no one least of all avery knows why a deadly game now she must move into the mansion she's inherited it's filled with secrets and codes and the old man's surviving relatives a family hell-bent on discovering why Avery got their money. Winner takes all. Soon she is caught in a deadly game that everyone in the strange family is playing. But just how far will they go to keep their fortune? Um, so yeah, interesting. Those are the six books that we have got. So we have Inheritance Games, Where the Crawdad Sings, Wrath of Poseidon, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, The Atlas Six, and The Book of Beginnings. Um, so yeah, nice wide range. Again, no overarching romance in them. There'll be elements of it in there. Um, I'm sure I will read a romance book at some point this month. Um, I feel like this is definitely a, I was going to say a less romance heavy month. I feel like in February, I did get, did I get a lot of romance? Technically I did. Um, I haven't 
the month of February is not up yet. Um, but I wanted to pick my TBR. So yeah. Those are obviously the six books that I have picked. It was quite nice to get one prompt. Um, that was quite nice just because it was something a little different. Quick, um, just coming back in. I completely forgot that I picked that first book. Um, also it turns out I literally flicked through it. Like I looked past it when picking my black book. Um, so Wrong Side of Goodbye by Michael Connolly. Um, is a crime thriller. And it says, Harry Bosch is LA's newest private investigator. He doesn't advertise, he doesn't have an office, and he only has himself to answer to. Soon he is hired by Whitney Vance, an aging reclusive billionaire who is haunted by one regret. When he was young, he met his great love, but she disappeared just after revealing she was pregnant. Did she have the baby, and if so, what happened to it? Vance wants to know the truth, and if and Bosch is the only person he trusts. But Bosch's instincts tell him this will be a dangerous job, not just for himself, but for the person he's looking for. I've read a Michael Connolly book before. I think it was an earlier in... There's the Harry Bosch... It was City of Bones by Michael Connolly. Um, I've, I think I've also read another one of his um, that all follow Harry Bosch. I've got another book of his um, somewhere in the late show. Um, I have another book of his which follows a different character um, which will be interesting to read when I get to it um, but yeah we have a crime thriller which actually we don't have on here do we? I've already forgotten the books I picked no this is a crime thriller because The Wrath of Poseidon is more of like an adventure thriller it's the easiest way I can describe it um, but yeah so actually I've picked seven books this month which is doable. Um, obviously, I might not read the books. I certainly haven't for some of my February TBR. Any guesses as to which one that which book I haven't read? Um, if you've watched my February TBR, which went up quite late. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what books you are going to be reading in the month of March down below. To be fair, I'm glad that there's no romance there. Well. I wanted a romance but I knew that this month I wasn't going to be leaning as heavy into the romance books as what I have done this month um but yeah I hope you guys enjoyed again hit that subscribe if you really really want to um and I'll see you guys in my next video bye guys